Instagram. Her Instagram name is Funko Junkie. So y'all go give her uh, a follow. Yeah, yeah Miss Funko Junkie. Sorry. <laughs> so y'all go give her a follow. And we are going to interview her today about her massive Funko pop collection. If y'all can see over her shoulder right there. On the, I guess that's my left, your right. <laughs> Look oh, at that. Just a few. <laughs> the whole room. <laughs> Right, so you are you ready? I'm ready. So tell everybody what's the difference between a Funko Pop uh, variant and a Chase. Okay, well, um, Funko Pops, like they're, well, see, the Pops are just the actual bobblehead vinyl figures. And then there's always, in certain lines, they'll do, like, Chase variants, which is like a one in six, usually. Um, when Pops were first made, they used to do one in 36, so they're a little bit more rare. And right. so there's there those are chases, and they'll have like a little yellow sticker that says Chase on it, and then um, like the vinyls are just like little cute like <laughs> figurines. They're not quite pops, you know. So it's just a little bit of a different thing. But we uh, keep it mainly like the Funko Pops. Okay, so I mean, does does Funko put out vinyl? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, so they're called like vinyl idols, I believe. And they're like little cute cartoony looking uh, figures. I, I I like them. I just don't collect them because I don't have space for them. Right. How did you get into Funko Pops? Um, I actually, I've always been like a little, like a collector of stuff. And then my husband is a comic book collector. And so I saw they had um, like the Silver Surfer and Dr. Doom and Thanos. And he loves Thanos. And so I got <laughs> A six inch Thanos. Nice. And he looked it up and he saw that there was like a big Funko community and like that it was like a big con thing. And he was like, We should start doing this. And then that's how all this. <laughs> it was a Christmas gift. <laughs> right. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> how many, how many uh, pops do you currently have? Um, it's somewhere we just recently like uh, liquidated. I was telling you before we started recording that you know we we rearrange the room, so we re we always rearrange and then we like we take stuff out because it just gets to be too much because there's so many, and so we were at about eighteen seventeen, so one thousand eight hundred seventeen. Wow! And we took out I believe like about two hundred, and so we'll get down to like fifteen hundred. Um, we'll try to purge like to fifteen hundred. <laughs> And but yeah, we always are somewhere in between like sixteen hundred and eighteen hundred. Oh wow, um, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, what is your most sought after pop? The one I want the most is the um, it's an all silver Harley Quinn. Uh, it was for Hot Topic employees only, and mm. like um, it's like each store I think got one, so I think there's like hundred and forty four of them, and yeah, it's. It's like thirteen hundred dollars. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, I I hope to get it one day. If I don't, I won't die. But I have all the Harleys, so I really want her to complete my collection. Yeah, I've got a. Uh, you got the golden? You probably have this. The golden Harley Quinn. The diamond one, I mean. Yeah, the diamond. Yeah, I have that. One. I absolutely love this one. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's actually, yeah, I have I have that one. I love that they did that one. Yeah, I like the way it feels. I, I took it out the box. Um, mm -hmm. Which one was your hardest one to acquire? <laughs> what? I, you know, honestly, we the the hardest ones to acquire. <laughs> that's the good thing about being popular on Instagram. A little bit is like when we have stuff that's hard for us to get our hands on. We usually have friends or store friends that will help us. Um, I definitely say, like, it's always, like, the con exclusives when you can't go to a con, mm -hmm. um, because people, they'll try to help you, but sometimes it's, like, a limit, like, one per, and then, uh, so, I don't know, I probably would say we have Qui-Gon Jinn from Star Wars. Nice. Limited to, I think, 1,000 pieces, and so, um we didn't think we were going to get it. And um, my friend, he ended up uh, just snagging it for us on the last day of NYCC. So we were pretty happy to have that. By the uh, way, that's my husband that just walked in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you remember what your first Funko, Funko um, pop was? 
I know you yeah. said that you got Thanos for your husband, but do you remember yeah. the one that you got for yourself? Yeah, it's actually, um, it's the pink and white Harley Quinn. It was a Valentine's Day exclusive for Hot Topic. Um, my husband started collecting in January of 2016, and I would help like him get stuff, and I was just kind of like, hmm. And then, <laughs> um, that pop came out, I think, like at the end of January, and I was looking at it, and I was like, oh, God, I really like this. And, you know, <laughs> you have the diamond one where it's pink and white. Right. This one was the one that wasn't diamond. It was just flat. Like, it was just painted. And I just oh. was like, this is really, really cute. I was like, I have to have this. And so that started the Harley thing, and then that started the pop thing, and it's all been. <laughs> <laughs> right. How long have you been co How long have you been, co uh, been collecting? since 2016 yeah wow that, yeah and actually probably like a little bit before that because like i said i was buying them for my husband just not we just weren't in in the knowledge of like collecting them and we didn't have our instagrams just yet right all right um any tips you would give to anybody collecting funko pops for the first time <clears throat> yeah it's uh my husband and i we always say like you got to definitely buy what you love. Um, don't buy for the hype because you'll end up with a bunch of stuff that you don't care about. You know, I think that can yep. be anything. And then um, also I see a lot of people like they get like in a frenzy when something first comes out and it's not limited and it's like, just breathe. It'll be there. <laughs> and like they don't <clears throat> want and they pay big money like on eBay or something like that. And it's like, yeah, you should always just kind of wait and see if you can get it for, you know, retail, you know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It comes that way. Especially like pops are super hyped up right now. So everybody's kind of like trying to make a buck off of them, you know? Yeah. Um, any, any Funko horror stories? <laughs> <laughs> um there's been a couple i you know i think it's always like a horror story when any kind of like pop first comes out and it's limited but like uh my husband and i have um like camped out for pops you know like to get like limited or rare ones uh we've had like other collectors be a little rude or crazy um <laughs> we've, we've um encountered a lot of interesting people <laughs> Right. Um, I think that's more so like um, a horror story. It's not so much the actual like getting the pops. It's just like being around certain people that, I mean, like it's like I said, people get like in a frenzy about these. Oh, things. I know. Like you know, it's calm down. <laughs> yeah, the, my manager at Fye told me that she's seen two grown men fighting over a pop. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've like I've literally seen someone like just flip out and lose it over not being able to get a chase variant and like they had to call the police and like he's like threatening the store employees and it was just like Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. Um I'm not I don't understand it, but that's life. Uh could you explain to everybody what the number on the pops mean? Oh, there you go. So you have to oh, see it. Yeah, well like so see they they come out with like different lines and then they'll have like the title of whatever it is and then they'll do a number uh variation so then that way you can keep them all, you know, lined up. I've noticed that though with Funko, like the quality on that is not always very good. Sometimes they'll <laughs> do number ones and like sometimes they'll just skip numbers and then you'll never see another pop come <laughs> our wow. actually at one point my husband had our collection all you know organized by the number and by the line and everything and it just got to be <laughs> yeah that sounded like it'd be a lot of work yeah he, he used to do a really good job of it and then once we hit like over like 1500 pops it was just like this is too much it's too hard <laughs> <laughs> and then with Funko not like Funko, like I said, their their quality control on those numbers and all that is a little sketchy sometimes. Right. Do you have like a book that you write them all down in so you don't buy duplicates? No. Um, <laughs> sometimes buy duplicates. Um sometimes like I'll order them online and then he'll pick them up and I'm like, I think I ordered that. Um we've gotten a lot better with communicating and not buying the same ones over and over. But we definitely use PPG, which is Pop Price Guide. And that's just kind of like a, a register for your pops, you know. Um, it's, it's you know, it's kind of hard. There's a Funko app where you can do that as well. But we find that to be a little glitchy sometimes. But both those, 
you know, both of those keep track of what you have. All right. The, <clears throat> excuse me. Does it matter if you if you keep the pop in the box or take it out? Well, if you're going to ever sell or trade them, I would suggest you keep it in the box. Um, we keep them in the box because we don't have shelves. And so if, like, we had shelves, we'd probably take them out and, like, have the box behind it and put the pop in front, you know? like That's what I do. A collection. Yeah. Like, those, uh, to us, that looks really good. But we have so many, that's just not an option. So we do kind of, like, the brick wall type look for mm. our collection. But um, we, we have pops that you know, in the future, we will either trade or sell. So we definitely try to keep them as meant and nice in the box as possible. But if you buy them and you're not going to ever trade, take them out. Appreciate them. <laughs> Usually the back of the pop is like the best part. Like they do such a good job, like on uh, the paints and the details. It's, yeah. you know, it's just well worth it, in my opinion, to take them out and appreciate them. I also like, I don't know if you've noticed in the community, but like the people that do the pop photography and like they do like these beautiful pictures and you get to really appreciate the pop out of the box, you know? Yeah, I've seen but a couple that, of those. Mm -hmm. They're really nice. Yeah, <clears throat> they've got some people that do some really great pictures. Uh, what's the best way to display your Funko Pops? We kind of elaborated on that yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, like I, I think it's all in how much space you have and how many you have. But then, like, you got some people that are really crazy. Like, they're like, take them out of the box. And then you have some people that are like, don't take them out of the box. <laughs> I think it's just your personal preference. Uh, we treat ours pretty good. I feel like we treat ours pretty good, especially for being, like, stacked up like they are. We try to love on them enough that the boxes don't get messed up. Right. But it just depends. Like, we have pops that are from, like, 2012. So, like, they're old. So, I mean, like, those boxes need extra protection we definitely buy a lot of pop protectors. <laughs> oh yeah wait <laughs> i bet um do you have them all in pop protectors or you just pick and choose we pick and choose um it would probably be impossible to well that's not true we'd have to spend a good little penny to get all of them in protectors right um, we probably would have i'd say anything that's over a 35 dollar value is in a pop protector in this room um, then we have all of our six inch pops and protectors and all of our, uh, two packs are in protectors. Um, a mm. friend of ours, uh, he owns uh, chalice collectibles and he makes like custom pop protectors for his store. And he, he's always made sure that we have them for our pops. Like, so cool. he'll be like, you need some? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah. It, it works out pretty well for us for our setup. Um, besides the Chrome Harley Quinn one, is there another pop that you always wanted that you can't like necessarily afford or yeah. you can't find, yeah. I should say, Definitely. better word than Definitely. afford? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We have like a, an amazing want list. Um, so, um, definitely on my higher end, I definitely would like to have the hollow, um, Darth Maul. He's, mm. uh, he's one of the priciest pops out there. Um, a dream pop for me would be the one in 12 glow in the dark Alex the large from a clockwork orange. Yeah. That pop's <laughs> worth like $13,000. I'll never have that. <laughs> right. That's crazy that it's just yeah. a toy. Yeah. Or a bobblehead is that much. I know. I know. And it's, it's done so amazingly. Like it looks so menacing and dope too. It's, oh God, I'd love to have that. And then like my husband, he's a big anime guy. So he of course wants the planet early of Vegeta. That's one of the more <laughs> thought after anime pops. That was right. a good little amount too. So I mean, like we do have a list. Um, I don't collect a lot of the ad icons, but I'd love to have the original Big Boy from SDCC. Mm -hmm. That pop worth a little bit too. So I mean, like there's there's pops up there, like real high up there. I mean, you know, it's like you could buy them, and we could buy them, but it's like I I really enjoy pop collecting at the level where I can buy it for cost. Like right. I think if I started buying stuff for like six hundred, seven hundred, a thousand, sixteen, I would just lose the love because I really, really enjoy just buying what I like, and yeah. that's why I have all the Harleys. I don't buy all the Harleys because I have to buy them. I buy them because I really love them. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I do. <laughs> you know, so it's just it's one of those things that I don't want to like fall out of love with pops because I've like pushed myself to have the most expensive thing or whatever, you know? Yeah.
Um, what would you say the most common mistake of Funko Pop collecting? I think just that, like trying to keep up with the hype, buying too much, you get burnt out. Um, Funko will make you dislike them if you are trying to be a completist and buy everything because they'll just keep pushing stuff out. Um, when we first started collecting, you know, you have like your little honeymoon phase where you just love everything and you're like, yeah. Hey. <laughs> and, like, you know, that's, I mean, it's fine for that moment, but I feel like a lot of collectors, like they start up and they're like, oh, this is so exciting. And then they buy, 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 buy. And then they're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And so I feel like that's one of the biggest because I see so many people who are like, I'm going to leave collecting. I'm not going to collect anymore. It's like, instead of doing that, why don't you just slow down? I'm just right. <laughs> just don't buy everything. Like, just buy what you genuinely like. And, yeah. Um, they did that to me to the Venomized line. I got all of the new ones like Thanos, Iron Man, all of them, and they're putting out more Venomized ones. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm telling I you, can't get them it's all. It's very hard. It's very hard to keep up with it. Yeah, we're, we, we like the Venomized ones, too. We, we appreciate oh, yeah. Those sculpts are just ridiculous, aren't they? Yeah, I like the uh, Green Goblin and the... Um, oh, yeah. And the that one Spider-Man, where he's like yeah. hair. Yeah. That and one that looks Dr. amazing. Strange one. That, that Doctor Strange one looks good, too. I like, but like that Green Goblin is like the, the top one, I feel like. Oh, yeah, that's the one that I need. Out of any of them, I need that one. Well, we haven't even seen what the exclusives are going to be yet, so I'm excited to see what those exclusives are. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, <laughs> we got like three more questions. What do you buy and sell, Funko, or trade? Uh, yeah, we definitely do that. Um, that's one of the the perks of having an Instagram account and being a collector is that you get to know other people. We, um, you know, we're in a collector club, and so we know a lot of people. So we're really comfortable trading with certain folks. And then, uh, every so often we'll do like a mystery box. Like I said, we kind of liquidate our collection because we have just so many we have to. And so it gives people a chance to get like older stuff and just like have fun with it. And then um, we do have like a local comic book shop where we take just like stuff that we just don't want anymore. And he's a friend of ours and we sell them to him. It's, you know, it's like you, we're not like trying to get rich off of collecting. That's not the goal here. Like we right. just we, honestly, like at this point, collecting has become a super social thing for us. Especially with the club and everything. So, yeah. Do you have a favorite place that you have that you collect Funkos? That like, do you specifically go to this one place over any other? Um, we. Well, I think <laughs> this like we because we've gotten to the point now in collecting where um we have to be picky about what we get. So mm -hmm. we definitely we hit every single con, which is a big deal. That's like con life is a is a huge ordeal. And so he and I are, are dedicated to that. Like we, we try to get all the con pops that are on our want lists uh, with the con stickers and all that. Right. And then um, we like, we definitely like our, our Hot Topic exclusives and our, our Target mm -hmm. exclusives. Those two stores seem to get like the best pops oh, like, yeah. as far as that goes. Um, but we really like the best is like the best thing to do. And I mean, we live in the country. We live in Arkansas is like to go to these little like nowhere towns and, like, go to comic shops and you find like little treasures in there, like older pops, not necessarily worth a whole bunch of money, but just stuff that you can't find anywhere else. So hitting up comic shops and toy shops and like thrift shops, that's that to us is like kind of the most fun thing to do. All right. And could you explain to us why do people get Funkos signed? Like yeah, well, getting them signed is just a fandom type thing. So, like, um, we don't have a whole bunch of signed pops here. Um, we, My husband doesn't like for the pops to be signed. He likes the box to be, like, pristine. Mm -hmm. And so um, I know some people will get, like, the pop protector signed now because they're like that. But the whole signing thing is just kind of like... Um, I have a friend that does the signing, like he, you can order a sign pop through him. He goes to all the cons and goes and gets everything done. And oh. it's for people that like, if you say you love Harley Quinn, you love the animated series, you have the animated Harley Quinn, right? right. Well, the person that voices Harley Quinn, you can have her sign that pop. Well, for someone that loves that, that's just like the, the cream of the crop, you know, like that's just the best thing ever. And so, I mean, it's kind of a cool thing to be able to do. Um, 
we had um, the creator of the Crow comic book come to Arkansas, and we had him sign our pop just because it was mine and I wanted it. And the girl in front of us actually brought a pop, and he actually like painted on the pop and made the pop look so dope. And I was kind of sad I didn't do that. So if he ever comes back, I'm gonna bring my pop so he can <laughs> draw on it. But I, mean, I think it's just a personal preference thing. And then you have some collectors that all they collect is sign pops, and it's just like I said, it's a fandom thing. I I noticed that a lot of comic book collectors like sign pops. That's, is the- that's kind of. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Does it decrease the value of the pop? Like, um, some people would think it increases it, and then some people, uh, it just depends on what you like and what you're willing to spend. Um, I know that people that love the signed pops, they would say it increases the value. Mm-hmm. Um, but like for my husband, my husband went, my husband would consider it to be like personalized. He wouldn't want it, you know. So yeah, it kind of depends on what you like to collect. Like I said. Like, I think, I definitely think that's more specific for people that like the artists, that like the creators and the actors. Like, it's it's a very specific market, you know? All right. Um, that's, that's the end of the interview. So, do you have any shout outs? Well, yeah, just shout out to my husband, Funko Junkie, and to our club, Collector World Order. And thank you for having me. I thought it was really <laughs> cool that you wanted to interview me. as kind of interesting. So. Yeah. We it's, yeah we uh, you're our first interview of the year. Well, I know I appreciate that. I thought it was pretty cool because I uh, like I've not ever done this, so it was something different and fun to do. Right? Yeah, we've never seen anybody with over fifteen hundred pops before. <laughs> it's very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, but you can come check out my page. It's Mrs. Funko Junkie, and I have all kinds of pictures of the room and everything, and you get to know us. And it's pretty. I mean, it's it's a lifestyle. It's it's a lot of fun. You know. <laughs> We collect all kinds of stuff. My husband collects comic books and Hot Wheels and Black Series and Marvel Legends. So, I mean, we have all kinds mm-hmm. of things. Our pop room is just kind of like our main thing. All right. All right, guys. Well, that's it for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Later. <laughs>